Hi, thanks. Uh, I am Giacomo from Odo 3D, and what we do is that we developed the first uh, ever smartphone 3D printer. So what is a smartphone 3D printer? Um, so it's these four plastic pieces you see here, but we actually developed a system which allows you to use your phone as part of the 3D printer and actually create the images. So the way that it works is that you have on the bottom there, you have your phone, then the middle part there that you see is a resin reservoir. So what you do is you pour in a resin which hardens under visible light. So what happens is when you close up this box, your phone goes through a slideshow of images, of white on black images, and wherever it's white, the resin's gonna harden there. Then there's a platform on the top part which raises up, then the <coughs> will show the next image, that'll harden, then it'll move up, and so on and so forth until you end up with your full 3D part. So here you actually get to see it in action. Um, you see that the platform goes down, it lights up, and it's going up and down because it's peeling off those layers one at a time. Um, obviously this is time lapse. And at the end, you end up with a 3D model. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move forward, but this is the part that was printed with it. So it was printed 90 degrees from here, so if you look on the right over here, you can see a bit the layers that it was creating as it went. Um, so the cool thing about this is there are lots of different resins which you can use, so there's different colors, but also um, different material properties. So we have a solid resin, which is basically like plexiglass or material, uh, as well as on the other end of the spectrum, we have a flexible one, which is basically like rubber. So as opposed to other types of 3D printing, you can start making actual end-use parts which are much more resilient and completely solid. Uh, another interesting one is the castable resin, which is actually, it completely vaporizes at around 400 degrees. So if you bring that to a jeweler, they will actually make a cast out of that. And then when they pour in the metal, it will completely replace whatever you 3D printed in titanium, gold, bronze, whatever metal you have, exactly as it was when you printed it. So here there's a few of the models that we printed. Um, you can see that even if it is just powered by your smartphone rather than anything else, you can get very smooth lines, very precise prints. And so this is, I actually have a demo of the app, uh -oh, which is now crashing. Um, but basically, it's a social platform. So within the app itself, what we have is we have a public library of models which users can upload to, they can share their own designs, they can go download them and then print them on their own models. Um, we also have the 3D message feature, which means that you can actually send, like in a regular chat, you send emojis, pictures, now you can actually send 3D models to people. So you have someone's birthday coming up, but you're across the world, you send them a 3D model, and they just print it. They don't know what's coming until they finish printing it, and then they have a ring or some toy or something like that. Um, here you have the models that you downloaded from your own, uh, from the public library, or the ones that you uploaded yourself. This is the last one I uploaded for Thanksgiving. Um, and then back to here, once you actually start printing, um, you have options of actually modifying the model within there. So you can scale the size, you can add multiple models, and every specific resin has its own individual QR code. So that means that you know exactly how much resin you have left and whether that's gonna be enough for a print. So you never actually end up wasting any of that resin you have. We actually give you a funnel because whatever doesn't harden, you can just pour back in and use it again later. Uh, so then once it slices, you close it up and you can start printing your model. And that's it for the presentation there. Um, and then I have the hardware here later to show you guys more in person. Are you selling these already?
Uh, no, so we launched a Kickstarter back in March, and right now we're in the final production and certification process, so uh, we're hoping early January to get those shipped and then open up on e-commerce distributors worldwide and all that. How much for a kit? Um, oh yeah, that's actually the most important thing. Uh, the printer itself is only $99. Um, and so the other, like, the next closest entry level 3D printer is probably the M3D printer, which is about 300 if you get it on a good deal. Um, and it requires a lot more kind of calibration and actually knowing what you're doing. Whereas this was designed, uh, we did some user testing. Within 10 minutes of opening your box, you can actually print not knowing anything about 3D printing. So the idea was really to get it into as many hands as possible. How, how much were the resins? Uh, it's fifteen dollars for a hundred milliliter bottle. Um, so depending on what you're printing, whether it's solid or not, it's a hundred cubic centimeters of printing area. So you're not usually going to be printing full bricks. So you can get like five or six prints out of one bottle. Yeah. So why does my phone need to be held hostage, and for how long? <laughs> um, well, it needs to be held hostage because the phone itself is actually creating the images underneath that's hardening the resin. Normally on other 3D printers, what you have under there is some sort of um, ultraviolet projector or lasers, which is why they're several thousand dollars. Whereas this way, all it is is your phone screen. Um, it takes about, the build size is 5 inches by 3 inches by 2 inches in height. So if you do the full 2 inches, it takes about 5 hours for a print. Um, the it, printer is designed so that you can charge your phone while you're doing it. So if you are using your primary phone, you just do it overnight. You start a print at night, and then when you wake up, when your alarm goes off, your printer, your part is done. Or use the last, the iPhone 5 that you got when you upgraded to the iPhone 6. It's still in your drawer. <laughs> yes? What type of um, volume can you, I guess how much uh, production can you make? Um, like how much can you the printing area? Yeah, or I suppose like how like how, how long does it take to actually make like a like a ring or a piece of jewelry? Um, so the good thing about the, these types of printers is that the only thing that changes the amount of time is how high you have it, um, because each layer still has the same amount of light showing. So whether you do like a finger or a full like break the full size, it takes the same amount of time if it's the same height. Um, the full size is 5 inches by 3 inches by 2 inches, assuming that your phone screen is that big. If it's smaller, it's limited by the <coughs> size of your phone. Yeah? What makes it stick to your little tray that goes up and down? Um, so that's just, I mean, so the platform itself is made of aluminum, um, which is good for adhering this, but basically when it goes down, that first layer, it's, each layer is 100 microns. That first layer is hardening directly onto the plate. Um, so the first layer actually stays longer than the rest of them, uh, so that you get that nice adhering, and then it peels off from the bottom, and so on and so forth for the next layers. Um, what's your uh, marketing strategy once this uh, launches? Uh, the marketing strategy right now, we haven't been particularly actively pursuing it. There have been people that have been just been coming to us asking to sell it. Um, when we launched the Kickstarter, we had the largest number of 3D printers pre-ordered in Kickstarter history. So it's just kind of been going on momentum at that point. Um, moving forward, uh, we are working on a marketing strategy. It's not uh, set out right now, though. Yeah. What kind of customer segments has this, um, has this been most popular with? Um, so it's, that's the really cool thing is that it's been super broad um, from the data that we collected on Kickstarter and Google Analytics. Uh, there's people who have never uh, really done any 3D printing before. We have a lot of hobby makers. Um, right now it's mostly fun projects, but depending on your phone resolution, you can actually get almost professional quality uh, prints up to 42 microns actually with a 4K display. Uh, one last question. What's the history behind the name? Oh no. Um, so, the original name was actually Olo with an L in the middle uh, because originally there were two gear shafts which needed to come through the actual part. So, we wanted a logo where the gear shafts could fit through with the two O's and we wanted it to be um, identical whether you looked at it one way or the other. Then we were threatened with a lawsuit because of the name and there are only so many letters which are still like 
identical on one side and the other, so. <laughs>